but instead a foul gets called, and then you send Sacred Heart's best player to the line for, for two. Gibson at the line. He missed the first one. It's still a seven-point Pioneer lead. And, and the Hawks have to get into some sort of offense quicker. They didn't get into a good offense a couple possessions before. And then Austin Tillotson just takes his eye off the ball, misses the pass with nobody on him. Just a sloppy play. This is one of those losses that, that if Monmouth does not come back in this game, which are down eight with two and a half to go, this is one of those losses that is really going to upset Coach Rice. Steal, quick three, top of the key, knocks it down. 54-49 now the game with 2.29 to go in the second half. Steve, this game far from over. The Hawks cut it to five. Far from over now after that huge shot from Jesse Steele. Uh, really run, running fast after the inbounds play uh, and then stop short. And his defender is all the way basically at the foul line because he's so fast. He pulls up and knocks down a huge three right there. If he doesn't make that shot, this game could be over. But Jesse gets the Hawks back in and only down five with 2.24 to go. And, Eddie, this is, this is one of those performances where if you don't come back to win this game, this one sticks with you for a while. Well, what makes this game so important, obviously, is that MU and Sacred Heart are both tied at four and six in the NEC. And also, they only play each other once. So if you come down to those last few games, and if Mammoth ties Sacred Heart, the Pioneers will hold whatever tiebreaker they need because of the one head-to-head -head win if they come away with a win tonight. Yeah, and, you know, like like we said, it's, there's still 2.20 to go. The Hawks don't need to foul or anything like that. It's still early. The one guy I would think about fouling early uh, is Greenbacker, but Coach Bike did pull him on this possession. Nice job by Coach Bike. That's now it. the Hawks just have to come up and get a stop. Mammoth will pick up man full here as Nesmith will check Evan Kelly. He'll cross the timeline with 2.15. He'll hand for Gaetano. He goes back door to Shane Gibson. Ed Wade comes over to cut him off. It's now Gaetano right wing with 17 on the clock. He's guarded by Tillotson. Gaetano gets free down low. His pass is stolen by Tillotson. Two minutes to go. MU ahead of the pack. Nesmith all the way. Lays it in. The Hawks cut the lead to three. And Tillotson was all over Gaetano who kind of forced the pass. It got stolen. A nice advance pass up the floor to Dion, who put it in. It's 54-51. Now another steal. They took it away again. Nicholas. Layup. Good. The Hawks cut it to one. Let's go, Monmouth. And then they get a trap uh, over half court. Uh, somebody looked like hit it out of bounds off of Gibson. There was no call. And then uh, I think it was Austin Tillotson dives and saves the ball into the front court. And Red was able to come up with it and get the steal and put it in. 118 to go. Second half. It's 54-53 Sacred Heart. Gaetano, right wing. MU doubling. Skip past the Montez down low. And a great foul by Austin Tillotson. If it's not all ball, it's the best foul we've seen tonight. And that's a good foul by Austin Tillotson. On that play, you're in scramble mode. So you're, you're trapping all over the court. Gaetano with another great look. No look pass to Montez down low. Tillotson hustles and is able to rake Montez before he gets a shot off. Now Montez has to go to the line and earn it. 70 seconds left in regulation. Montez misses the first one. Dulaire will check back and in. And Tillotson with some great hustle plays. Went, went right in front of the Sacred Heart bench when they had a trap there for that layup for Red. Uh, the ball was kind of bouncing around. I thought Shane Gibson it got, it got hit off of him at a bounce. The ball still bouncing around, and Tillotson dives and bats the ball into the front court. Red was able to come up with it. And then he fouls Montez who had a wide-open layup attempt, so great job by Tillotson. Montez goes 0 for 2. Tillotson with the rebound. The Hawks can take the lead with a 2 here. What a comeback this would be. 60 seconds left. Steele has Kelly on skates. Jesse loses it. Dives to the ground. Saves it to Edway. Ed shot. Good. And you up by 1. Wow, what a turn of events. What a turn of events. Oh, my God, Eddie. I can't believe it. Jesse Steele started it with a three. Then you have uh, fast break points. Then you have Jesse Steele break into the defense, loses the ball, dives on it, gets it to Ed, who puts his shoulder into a uh, Wisniak, goes up for a layup and knocks it down. What a turn of events in a hurry for the Hawks. Now up one with 52 seconds to go. 55, 54, Mammoth leads. 52 seconds left. What a tremendous comeback. This would be two and a half minutes to go. I don't think anyone thought the Hawks had any luck.
life in them, and then like that, the snap of a finger, they're back in the yeah, game. Well, at the, at the 220 mark, at the 220 mark, is Jesse Steele uh, maybe cramping up as uh, Vanessa Christensen, uh, MU trainer, stretching them out on the bench. But at the 220 mark, we were saying as the Hawks were down eight that this is one of those performances that could really, really uh, just sticks with you if you don't come out of here with a victory. And then it starts on the defensive end. The Hawks were able to get some stops. Jesse Steele pulls up and hits a three to start the comeback. You're down five. Then you get a couple steals. Dion gets a layup in transition. You get a trap on the baseline. Red Nicholas gets a, gets a layup in transition. You get, a, you get a foul on a nice play by Austin Tillotson. You get two missed foul shots, and, and then you get Jesse kind of fortunate to lose the ball, get it back. Edway gets it and scores it. Max DeLeo on the court now. Max in for hustle points as he'll have to harass Kelly. Gaetano will cross the timeline with 43. He's checked by Nesmith. Dion got it! Did he save it in bounds? No, but what a tremendous hustle play by Dion Nesmith. It'll be Pioneer Ball, 40 on the clock, 20 on the shot clock. And, and Gaetano crossed it over in front of Dion. He swatted it away, tried to dive on it, uh, kind of right in front of us. Wasn't able to get it on the bait, or on the sideline. Sacred Heart uh, maintains possession. 20 seconds separate the shot and the game clock. Montez gets free. Long two. Short, no good. Edway pulls it down. Outlet to Tillotson. Austin's by himself. He'll lay it in. It's a three-point Mammoth lead. Under 30 seconds to go. And the Hawks have to know who they have here in transition. No easy three looks. Gaetano, his shot, no good. Tip, no good. Edway pulls it down. 20 seconds left. And Sacred Heart has to foul Jesse Steele, who will have a one and one back the other way. Eddie, I cannot believe it's so loud in here. I can't believe the comeback from the Hawks. Now Jesse going to the line up three. What a t I can't believe the turn of events in a heartbeat. I want to say it was 53-46 at one point, Steve. Steals one and one is good. 18.4 seconds to go in the second half. What a turn of events here at the Mac. Uh, I can't. It's just, it's just unreal as, uh, in a way, Sacred Heart, no, no, there's no in a way about it, Sacred Heart kind of with no poise in the last two and a half minutes. As the crowd got more into the game, as the Hawks started, started scrambling, as the Hawks started scrambling, uh, late, as the Hawks started scrambling to get traps and get steals, there was no poise from Sacred Heart. They turned the ball over. They took bad shots. They didn't get back on defense. And uh, all of that added up to a 12 run for the Hawks. It was 54 to 46. And the Hawks now on a 12-0 run. Unbelievable. Now up four. They were down eight. Now up four. Jesse Steele has one more free throw to come. It's 58-54 MU. 18.4 left. This would be a big one. It's already a two possession game right now. Jesse hit them both. It's 59-54. Montez will inbound to Kelly. Kelly will bring it up with 15 on the clock. He'll get into the lane. His layup will go, and Coach Bike will take a timeout. This was a 53-46 game. That a huge run for the Hawks as they're now up 59 to 56. 13.3 uh, left, Steve. Coach Bike took that timeout. If you're Coach Rice. You have to get the ball to Jesse Steele, right? Yeah, you got to get the ball into Jesse. Try to have him get fouled. Uh, the main thing is, though, is that you can't get the ball in. Burn a timeout. You don't want any turnovers here uh, in this possession. So, uh, and also, you want to try to sub in your best foul shooter. So whoever gets fouled, you're confident that they're going to go to the line and make foul shots. But the main thing is get the ball in. You try to avoid that corner as best as you can because you don't want to get trapped. It'll be Tillotson, Steele, Nesmith, Edway, and Max DeLeo on the floor again. And the Hawks were down eight. Uh, and Jesse Steele pulled up for a three to make it 54-49. To me, that was the biggest shot of the ball game to keep the Hawks alive. And then the traps and getting the steals were just great. And the Mac is just so loud. The Mac is so loud when it gets going in here. Ed waits to inbound. He tries to get it into Steele. Ed nowhere to go. Wild inbounds pass. Nesmith catches it, and he's fouled right away. And him and Gibson go tumbling down to the deck. 
And no one hurt, thankfully. That was a scary-looking collision, as Dion will have one and one with 11.8 showing. I'm not going to lie. I thought Dion might have gotten away. Uh, I'm, I, I thought Dion caught it and kind of shuffled a little bit because it was such a scramble situation. Ed couldn't find anybody to get the ball, and he kind of lobbed it up to Dion. Dion caught it kind of like a football player on the back pedal. He might have gotten away with the walk, but they called a foul. And I don't know if the Hawks have any timeouts left, but that was scary. I thought Ed should have burned a timeout. Dion hits the first free throw to put the Hawks up by four, 60 to 56. Well, when it's all said and done, Ed was able to get the ball into Dion. He steps up and makes the first foul shot. Now the Hawks have to get back on D. No personnel. Know where Shane Gibson is, but do not foul. I'll let the Mac tell you if Dion makes the second one. 61-56, under 12 to go now. Gaetano inbounds to Kelly with 10 seconds to go. Kelly runs it up court. Three on the way for Sadowski. No good. Rebound tipped into the moment backcourt. Nesmith comes away with it. Dion will lay it in with one second left. MU is going to come back and win. 63-56. Three at the buzzer is no good. The Hawks come back. They win an absolutely critical NEC game at home at the MAC. Let's go. I'm so happy for, for Coach Rice and for the Hawks because at two and a half minutes to go at 54-46, it looked bleak. But they kept playing hard, and they made plays. Jesse Steele hit a big shot. Then they really pressured Sacred Heart, and Sacred Heart showed absolutely no poise in the final two minutes of this game as they turned the ball over. They didn't get much offensively. It seemed like Shane Gibson never, never touched the ball in the last 220, and he's your best player. You want to live and die with him. But, wow, what a comeback. And Coach Rice is pumped up, goes over to the student section. It's like a reverse storm the court. The players are storming the stands. And as they should, because this place was loud. And, and, and with two and a half to go, and Mammoth making their comeback, at the MAC just got so loud. It was a great comeback. Oh, my God, what a win here for Coach Rice and the Hawks.